Welcome. We can think of several different reasons why you are watching this movie. A. You want to learn about pipetting and pipettes. B. You are in biology 1406 Monday and Wednesday nights. C. You lost a bet. D. You are Dr. Hatterall and you just have to. Or E. You are lonely on a Friday night. In all cases, we'd like to welcome you and hope that you enjoy this movie. Scientific processes require a great amount of precision, from simple biology labs performed in a school laboratory, preparing a science student for a future career in science, to highly complex processes that lead to phenomenal research and scientific findings. Quantitative methods play a very large role role in the accuracy of the results. While a scientist performs the scientific procedures, there are several different steps that are followed. One of these processes is pipetting. As science students, we started wondering if God used pipetting while creating the universe. Or could the Human Genome Project have been completed without the use of the pipetting? These are questions that we will be exploring in this video, as we teach you how to use a pipette. What is pipetting, and why is it used, you may ask. What goal does it achieve, and how is it important? Is it not a simple process? Who uses a pipette? Is there more than one type of pipette available? Here we go. Let us demystify pipetting. You may have correctly guessed that there are several different types of pipettes available. In this film, we have primarily featured pipettes most frequently used in school laboratories. Pipetting is one of the most fundamental procedures used in biology, microbiology, chemistry, as well as any other science, where accurate measures of volumes need to be used in experimental procedures. In the world of biology, scientists use pipettes on a daily basis. Similarly, in the different experiments that we performed, pipetting was the most frequently used technique, and we have come to believe that mastering this technique is important for a science student. This is why we have devoted this video to pipetting. A pipette is a measuring and dispensing device used for volumetric measurements. Simple pipettes are tubes made of glass or plastic. Pipettes come in different sizes ranging from 1 milliliters to 100 milliliters Plastic pipettes with a bulb attached are usually used for transferring certain amounts of liquids from one container to a different container. Similarly, glass transfer pipettes are used for highly volatile chemicals which cannot be transferred using a plastic pipette. Glass volumetric pipettes are used for more accurate measurements. These pipettes are generally graduated depending on their size. For example, a 10 milliliter pipette will have markings on it that allow the user to measure volumes up to one tenth of a milliliter accuracy. Simple pipettes use a simple procedure for drawing the liquid and placing it into the receiving container. A plastic pipette has a bulb attached to it, much like a dropper. Squeezing the bulb removes the air from the bulb, creating a vacuum. Then placing the pipette into the liquid allows you to draw the volume that you need. With a glass pipette open on both ends, how does one draw up liquids into a pipette? Although most pipetting may seem like a solution, who really wants to draw up all of those chemicals into their mouth? And besides, that is not exactly a scientific method. So stop mouth pipetting. We found the pipette bulb to be the solution. Here are the steps to using a pipette and a pipette bulb. Find a pipette bulb that fits the size of your pipette. 
Attach the bulb, ensuring that you are using the right sized pipette. Squeeze the bulb to remove any air that is in the bulb. Next, place the pipette in the liquid and draw up the volume that you need. Wait until you have drawn a volume larger than what you need. Remove the bulb and secure the volume in your pipette by placing your finger on top of the pipette. Next, adjust the volume by releasing your finger and allowing some of the volume to drain. The last step is to release the volume into your receiving container. Pipetting is great for displacing relatively small volumes. But wait a second, what happens when you have to measure volumes much smaller? An example? Let us go back to the Human Genome Project. Strand after strand of human DNA had to be isolated and studied. At the cellular level, you don't have the luxury of milliliters. All you have is tiny organelles and even tinier margin of error. So how do you measure volumes at that level? How do you then measure volumes smaller than a drop of water? The answer lies in a technique known as micropipetting. A micropipetter, a much more sophisticated device and much more frequently used for accurate measurements, operates on a mechanical pump. The micropipetter has the ability to measure volumes accurate to one microliter, one thousandth of a milliliter. One microliter is so small that it is nearly impossible to measure it in a free hand measure. So in order to draw and dispense such a tiny amount, a more accurate device is needed. With a micropipetter, a method called air displacement is used. Micropipetters come in different varieties. Our goal in this project is to show you the use of a single channel pipetter. Given the fact that we are going to measure a very small and accurate volume, adjusting the volume on the micropipetter is very important. The dial on top of a micropipetter is used for setting the volume. Turn the dial until you have reached the desired volume. Below the dial, there is a trigger for locking the volume setting of your pipetter. You lock this trigger to secure your volume setting. Micropipetters use disposable tips. This ensures lower levels of cross-contamination of liquids. This does become very important when we are trying to achieve a task as delicate as isolating DNA fragments in an experiment. Notice that the plunger on the top has two stops. Drawing up the liquid into the micropipetter is done by first pressing the plunger to its first stop, lowering the tip into the liquid and releasing the plunger. To displace the liquid in the tip of the micropipetter, gently touch the tip of the pipetter to your receiving vial and press the plunger through its first stop. This ensures that the entire volume gets dispensed into the receiving vial. Let us look at that once again. Push through the first stop all the way down. Have you noticed an additional trigger on the tip of the micropipetter? That is the release trigger. The release trigger is used to discard the plastic tip. Press the release button on the micropipetter. Now that we have learned the basic steps about pipetting, let us go back to our fundamental scientific question. Did God use this valuable technique while creating the universe? Did he put strand after strand of DNA together? And truly, how close is the mankind to revealing the rest of universe's secret codes? We certainly do not the answer to this question, but we do like to share with you a very neat experiment. It is not the Human Genome Project with its 23,000 genes and 3.3 billion DNA segments. It was not even the smallest genome project, the Carcinella with its 182 genes and 160,000 DNA letters. 
No, our experiment was much simpler and much smaller. Are you ready? Using gel electrophoresis, we performed a DNA fingerprint experiment. Why is this so very exciting, you may ask? Well, here it is. We used micropipetting all throughout this experiment. Here is how and here is why. The first step was to cast an Ambrose gel. Gel was prepared to load the DNA strands to run them through the electrophoresis chamber. In order to be able to separate the DNA strands, we had to use several different steps. First, we added a restriction enzyme to cut the DNA segments. This would provide us with a different samples from different individuals. In addition, a loading die was used to make the reading of the samples easier. The centrifuge is used in this experiment to move this small volume of DNA to the bottom of the wire to make it ready for micropipetting. Once you have centrifuged all of your wires, this small amount of DNA moves to the bottom of the wire, and that is when you can use a micropipetter. Remember the comb that was put in the gel as it was cast? The comb creates the wells that are used for loading the DNA. Once the gel is ready and the samples are made ready, the micropipette is every single DNA sample into our gel and we were ready for electrophoresis. The electrophoresis chamber was made ready by using a buffer. We are almost ready to run our electrophoresis. We first had to set the voltage of the machine to 100, otherwise we would have fried the DNA samples. We ran the electrophoresis for 30 minutes. With our gel in the chamber and running through the electrophoresis, we had nothing else but to wait for the gel to be ready for us to be read. And once we had our results, here is what we got. Here is what we ended up with. A gel with different people's DNA on it. If that is not cool, I don't know what it is. <laughs>